Yo, this is DJ Shifty, and you're tuned in to RGRTV. So, uh, how do you feel about the turntablism scene crying, and how it has progressed throughout the years? Uh, I think the turntablism scene is doing well. Um, uh, there are more routine videos on the internet now than I've ever seen before and with things like Instagram and like the portableist kind of movement I feel like there's never been more scratching mm -hmm. um, just like I, I mean I'm biased because I follow a lot of DJs but I feel like there are just so many videos so people are exposed to it uh, way more easily than they would have been uh, you know before like whatever Instagram um, and yeah, I think I think it, it's it's doing well. It's just I think with the portableist thing and just like digital DJing, it's way more accessible now for more people than ever before. Uh, so I think turntablism is doing well. Uh, so like, who are your inspirations and stuff? Uh, for turntablism kind of stuff, um, Craze, A Track. Uh, that's who I sort of grew up on. Cubert. Uh, the Low Lives Crew, uh, Precision, and Boogie Blind, and, and Confucius, um, and then and then other otherwise, uh, as I like fo focus more of my time on music production, um, people like Pharrell and, and Timberland, and oh. sort of like okay. uh, hi hip hop hip hop producers. Uh, okay, so uh, how do you actually go about creating one of your like awesome routines? Thank they you. Seem, for, like, thank really, you for really saying tough that. to do. Um, well, it's, it's changed a lot over the years. It used to take me a really long time to make a routine. Like when I was battling and doing DMC, I would spend the whole year to make like four routines. Um, I had one routine that I started before I went to college. And I didn't finish it till after I finished college. I needed like four years of a college education to finish the routine. But now um, I've made so many routines uh, that I sort of know what it feels like when I'm on a good track. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that's tough is if you try to make something, it's hard to know if it's like a good thing to pursue. Um, and so now uh, for routine, I would just, depending on how good I want it to be, um, I would take off like a week or two weeks and just, and just work on it then. But I mean, nowadays I could make, like actually last week I had to do a last minute project and I made a routine a day for three days. Um, so it just it just depends how much I can push it. You at most these days I'd say like two weeks. Ooh, okay. So actually there are like three like important aspects like uh, creativity, technicality, and musicality. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance it all? Like which one do you think is more important? Uh, so my my thinking on this has also changed. When I was battling, to me the most important part was technicality mm -hmm. and creativity, and. Uh, I think those are still important, but now, um, as far as w what I'm thinking as an artist, the most th important thing by far for me is musicality. Mm -hmm. um, does it sound good? Do that's it. Does it sound good? Does it sound good to someone who doesn't know anything about turntablism? Mm -hmm. And so the way I make my routines now, really the number one thing that I'm thinking about beyond creativity and tricks is, like if you didn't watch it, would it still sound cool? Mm -hmm. Would someone who doesn't care at all about technique, would they still enjoy it? Um, and so for, for me right now, where, where I'm at as an artist who's not like battling anymore, that's the most important thing. Does it, does it sound good? Mm -hmm. um, and does it sound like you as an artist? Okay, so actually, you're actually also uh, one half of a DJ duo with uh, DJ Inferno. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Easy. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you like come, like come together with him? Uh, we came together through an email, um, this, uh, this guy we know named Dirty South Joe just put us on an email together, said like, hey, you guys should do something. I mean, I've known Inferno uh, since I was like 17, uh, maybe even younger than that, 16, because um, we used to battle each other in the DMCs in like 2002 and 2003. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it, first it, was, it, came, it came together just like, oh, like, let's make a video together. Um, and we started that process, but it, um, it, it, we like sort of worked together so naturally. And the actual music we were making, beyond any kind of DJ performance thing, was music that we were both really excited about. So sort of what started as one collaboration grew into 
a whole project just out of like us doing this like hey like this is really exciting let's let's keep it going Ooh, okay okay so uh do you have anything planned ahead for you guys like are there like any more routines you're going to come up with mm -hmm. anytime soon yeah we have a um, i'm not sure when when it's going to be released but we have a new single called uh, naked um that's going to come out uh at this point i would imagine in the beginning of 2017 um and and right yeah right now it's sort of a music first um kind of approach where where we make the songs and our our focus right now is more on just like making good songs um so that'll be the next thing that comes out this track called uh, naked uh, featuring amir uh, which is all about getting naked okay so uh you're actually also part of uh, you're actually the founder of a record label mm -hmm. uh hot mom usa that's true so how do you actually like go about uh naming your record label do you are you like into like hot moms and stuff um uh yeah so it's sort of like an unfortunate name in in some senses in that um in that like personally i'm not like a uh like misogynist or or, or anything like that um it, it started with me and me and my friend alex we had a track together uh and um we just like the track was like a really wacky track and so there wasn't really a good label for it. So we made the label to just sort of be a wacky label, like a silly label. And the idea behind the name was just to like make the most ridiculous name that we could think of. So a, a name that uh, uh, just like if you if you hear Hot Mom USA, you're not going to be like be like, oh okay, you're like you'll have maybe some kind of reaction to it. Mm -hmm. um, so so that yeah, it was just sort of like to make an in your face kind of name. Okay. And I'd say uh, now now it's sort of like more about about like um just just like the name the name is more about like like o owning whatever you're about so it's like like there goes that like it's like hot mom going down the street sort of like o owning it um but hot mom usa that's the label so maybe you could tell me more about your record label like mm -hmm. like what 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 it does and stuff yeah so we uh we've been around th three four years maybe four years actually um, and uh, it's really about trying to find uh, unique personalities in different scenes. Um, so people who are making like cool grime music, people who are making cool club music, cool footwork music, and just trying to find people um, who are really just like unique characters and are part of scenes um, in wherever, wherever they're from. Uh, and then more recently starting to combine that with sort of a more kind of like crossover -y, accessible kind of outlook of trying to put out like hip hop songs that still fit our sort of weird vibe or, or R&B songs that still kind of fit um, our weird vibe or even sort of like more festival kind of tracks which we normally we wouldn't have done before but like finding people who can do it in like a, in a cool way. Um, so that's that's what it's been about, always been about kind of like finding just like different sort of unique personalities in their scenes. If you were to like want to collab with uh, any artist out there or singer or DJ out mm. there in the world, who would you want to collab with? Kanye, I want to get a, get in this world uh, and uh, get weird. The famous uh, song is it? Yeah, can't cut. Yeah, um, yeah, that particular Kanye, the Kanye is famous. Yeah. So, um, do you have any like advice for aspiring turntablists or DJs out there? Uh, most important thing is to work crazy hard and and practice crazy hard and and try to practice in a way that you're always doing stuff where you sound bad and you feel bad and I think it also really helps to be around people who are going to tell you that you're whack um, people who are like no like that that routine you made not nah, sucks I think that's really to obviously work hard but to have people around you who can tell you the sort of like the truth mm -hmm. um, about what you're doing um, is really important. Uh, and then the final thing is just trying to be, be original and put your own stamp on things and like have your own kind of sound, both in terms of technique and the music that you use. But step one is just working crazy hard and training your body hours after hours. In a, and I recommend like a very small room. If you can get in a very little room, mm -hmm with no windows 
you should just like try to be in that room as much as possible. Uh, the last question would be, so what are your goals for 2017? 2017, really my, my mindset for 2016 too and 2017 is, is growing as a producer um, and music maker and artist and sort of being a little bit less about technique um, and being more about like what is what is my sound like what what is the feeling that you would get if you came to a shifty show um, and so for 2017 it's going to be growing that and coming out with uh, either an album or an EP and a series of singles but uh, really just um, sort of con con continuing in in finding and making my sound from like a music production standpoint and then having the DJ side of what I do uh, sort of be like the live version rather than sort of like a purely DJ kind of thing. So out main, main thing would be an album that if, either if not an album like an EP or a mixtape um, but right but sort of putting out a bigger body of work for 2017. I'm gonna look forward to listening to your EP man. Thank you. <laughs>